Well, welcome to the uh, final installment of our Apple II Pie video series. What I'm showing off here today is the same Apple II E as last time. I have kind of swapped its monitor out with something a little less uh, jarring uh, in terms of technology. This one's nice and white and still a 4x3 aspect ratio, so it doesn't look completely out of place with the Apple II. Uh, but we still have our Apple II mouse. And what we're showing over here in this window is Minecraft. Now I can operate Minecraft with the Apple II mouse. But what I've made a change in in the software is how we work with the actual key presses. Uh, Minecraft, let me see if I can get both going here, requires the key up and down events in order to continue moving your player in the Minecraft world using the kind of WASD keys. Previously I was just recording the key press and release all at once as the Apple II hardware kind of works that way. But with the Apple IIe and Apple IIc you do have the ability to check for a key remaining pressed after the initial key press is registered. So I reworked the software and now we're pretty solid in terms of recognizing when a key is pressed and then released. So unfortunately it only recognizes one key being held down so we are unable to um, do more than one key at a time but for moving around in Minecraft that's sufficient. So that's pretty much the updates on the software front. Now you can see I have the uh, lid off Apple IIe here, uh, so I don't have to drop everything on camera. But the real changes that have been made is, as I move the light over, our Apple II Pi Proto Card. Now you still see we have the Apple II Proto Card connected to the Raspberry Pi by way of this ribbon cable, but our proto card now includes some logic on it, and our proto card is no longer connected to any external hardware like the Super Serial card like it was previously. What I've done is basically incorporated the guts of the Super Serial card onto the proto card, speaking directly to the Raspberry Pi. So let's go ahead and shut everything down here. And I will give you a brief review As we're coming down here. It takes a little bit of time to shut everything down. Okay. Well, being proper to shut it down without uh, just powering down, although I tend to do that too often. This will shut down. And again, our video cord coming out of the back of here feeds right into the case and then into our Raspberry Pi, again using that little angle bracket down there, giving us, um, in this case, actually DVI. I have a the uh, HDMI to DVI cable hooked up on this monitor. So um, we're now powered down and I can shut off. Now what I have connected to my Raspberry Pi is a USB extension which goes actually to my Wi-Fi because what I'm running here is the Model A Raspberry Pi. And I'm trying to do this all kind of one handed, so I'm being very successful. Okay. So, what we have, I have the high quality rubber band holding it all together, so I can do this.
And so our, our Raspberry Pi now is just connected by way of the ribbon cable. And then on our proto board, what we now have is the 6551 asynchronous communication interface chip and then a 7404 hex inverter which is required just for doing a little bit of buffering and uh, helping out decode some of the address lines but that's it that's all that is on this proto card aside from some wires okay a lot of wires and a couple of resistors and the way I was able to get away with that is the simplicity of the interfacing to the Apple bus or the ACIA but the Raspberry Pi is also generating the basic clock signal off this GPIO pin which I have then connected down to the input of the uh, serial chip and that provides the baseline clocking signal for uh, the baud rate generator. So instead of using a crystal clock that uh, you normally have to provide in order to get uh, the, the right frequency divider, is I've got a simple little program that uses um, the 500 megahertz PLL output on one of the PLLs in the Raspberry Pi, divides it down, and gets within uh, a tenth of a percent of the correct frequency to feed right into to the um, serial chip, thus obviating the need for any additional hardware. So that's uh, about as minimal hardware implementation as you're going to get to communicate with the Raspberry Pi and the Apple II. Um, now these are just rubber bumpers here, that's just to hold everything off. And then the rest is all Raspberry Pi. Uh, this is again the Model A. I did that uh, for two reasons. Uh, one is the lower power consumption. I wasn't sure what the uh, what it would do to my power supply. And the other thing is if um, I accidentally blew up a Raspberry Pi, I'd rather blow up the $25 one as opposed to the $35 one. Uh, not that I've ever done that before. Anyway, so that is the culmination of my Raspberry Pi Apple II Frankenstein project and uh, perhaps if uh, I can convince somebody to go ahead and uh, build up some actual PCBs and uh, uh, we'll see if there's any interest of people wanting to actually buy these. Uh, it's kind of a small niche product but eh, it's kind of neat. But there you have it. That is the culmination of our Apple II Pi project. Thanks for watching.